If I wear two hats, a lot of people know me know I wear two hats. I'm Ryan Patch Extension uh, Educator by day and Ryan Patch Light of Farm at night. I'm a commercial vegetable operator besides my good job and Taylor CSA and all that stuff from Otter Tail County, Lake, uh, Lake Agassiz Chapter. Right? There we go. And, uh, but today I'm, I'm more or less wearing my extension hat, right? Because uh, I'm basing some of this, uh, this intro presentation on some work that we had done five years ago. It's still a, kind of our best data in terms of that we've aggregated and looked at uh, uh, garlic operations here in the state. And I think it's informative for us as we kind of think about and frame up, you know, what does scale, scaling up look like? Um, and so um, I'll, I'll do some of that. I like, uh, I used this at a Moses conference when we talked about garlic, and it was like a tale of two farms. Um, Check out, these guys are actually Canadian. He, you'd think he's British, he's got that, that gap. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but there are a lot of British that ended up in Canada. I think that explains it. Um, but look at these guys. Happy as larks, right? They're at the farmer's market, feeling good. Husband and wife team, I'm assuming. Right? Oh my God, he's like, I think, a buck fifty a pump, a bulb here and this. And this guy over here, I don't know, I called him Bill. He looks worn out. <laughs> Doesn't he? Look at this guy. This guy's haggard. Put, when you look at haggard in the dictionary, it's his picture there. Okay? <laughs> well, check this out. He's got chestnut bread. 50 cents each. What are you doing? Right? So, uh, in this tale of two farms, um, we might say, hey, look. These guys are successful, feeling great, right? The pricing right. They got a mix of products on the table. A lot of times I like talking about marketing. How do you, how do you present and market the product? Right, you take one particular crop and make it different products. It's always a good strategy, if you will. Um, and Bill over here is just doing it wrong. Doing it wrong, right? But honestly, these are just pictures, right? We could, we could look at the point a little bit differently in that, <clears throat> Well, behold, we might have a husband and wife team that's selling at a decent price, feeling good, but they're only at that market three freaking days a year. Of course you'd feel good, right? I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna unload everything I, I raised. I planted six, 60 pounds of seed garlic last year, and we're happy. And that might, that might be the end of the story, and that's fine. And some of you might be in that situation, like, and that's great. And Bill over here, he might seem like he's down and out and feeling bad, but all he's trying to do is hook people into garlic but in all actuality, Bill over here is uh, scaled up to the point where, even though it looks like he has some low prices on the table and looks kind of worn out, uh, he, he is the ultimate wholesaler of garlic in his, his region of the state. You know what I'm saying? And all this monkey business hanging out at the farmer's market is just a way to, to feature his product and to make new customers at fellow vendors at the farmer's market. So, uh, although I like to, to think this is a, this is a story of marketing um, and pricing, it isn't, uh, things aren't always to what they meet the eye. And so we're going to try to, we're going to look at some numbers here, and then we'll talk a little bit about some considerations as regards to scaling up garlic. And like I said, it's old, but it's still the most methodical way that we've looked at some of the farm finances around, uh, around garlic. So this looks at 2017 data, it's eight growers. And when you do specialty crop research, you know, each farm is a snowflake, I like to say, right? Eight growers are eight growers. You know, once we start collecting data from, you know, 3,000 corn farms, and we can say something about corn in a much more statistical way, right? But that's okay. This is real data from real people. I keep trying to put this forward. The main number, just to give you a feel for where that was, and I think some of these numbers have changed. Um, Here's the total amount of average price sold, a little under $10. Uh, the direct expense per pound. This includes cash and non-cash expenses. And that's a big, big part of the story in the world of garlic, the garlic enterprise, is that we have this large non-cash expense of garlic seed that we're holding over, right? It has a value. We need to incorporate that as the value when we look at the enterprise. But low bill, we're not paying money for that every year. That's of course we can add to the seed stock and all this kind of stuff. Uh, whereas the cash expense is fairly low. Uh, with overall cash uh, cost production, when we did this with labor, 
of about 857 a pound. So we look at this and we're like, oh god, that doesn't look too too exciting. There's where's the spread here, Ryan? I don't feel so good about that. But that's representative of the whole group, if you will. So I thought this would be a more interesting thing to look at in terms of how we frame up and as I'm the opening guy for Victor over here. I'm, I'm your opener. I'm like, I'm like the opening act, so I'm warming the crowd up here for you. Uh, so if we look at this, just a basic thing, we have total sales, we have expenses, and in my world, I'm often breaking out production expenses versus marketing expenses. Marketing expenses, everything where I'm transporting this garlic from here to there, or I'm spending time at a farmer's market, however long to get this stuff sold, these are all marketing expenses. Uh, and then we got overall operating revenue, just simply revenue minus both of these expenses. Do, 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 do. We do it on a per square foot basis, and we have a gross margin. Gross margin, it's my crash course and all this stuff. Gross margin is, you read it in terms of for every dollar of sale up here, what am I holding on to, right? I got a dollar of sale in garlic, oh man, I'm giving 46 cents. It's not bad. So, which farm do you, which farm would you pick? Now, I'll give the oriented view a little bit. I think you can all agree, we don't want to be this guy, right? The one with the negative gross margin, for every dollar of sale, they lose four cents. We don't want to be there, <laughs> all right? But that, that was the easy one we could rule out. Uh, farm F, man, every dollar of sale will give me 65 cents. Pretty good, really good. But, but, well, then $1,600 in sales, right? Easy to have good profitability when you're small. That's my example of my, the, 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 the lining's in the first picture, right? Farm A, here, what about these guys? Huh, keeping 51 cents of every dollar? Good sales? Holding on to uh, a good amount of revenue. They're holding on to the most revenue once you take their total sales minus the total expenses. So maybe they're the ones we should pick. Or simply this one here. Just because, hey, they have the most sales, right? So all of these are a mix of different factors in terms of where folks are at in terms of their scale in terms of their efficiency. Um, and it's all this variation between price, scale, and efficiency, if you will. One thing we did in the report, you can get to the report, is at the beginning of my slides, umn.z.umn.edu forward slash garlic. Uh, but it's also on Jerry's page. We put this normalized data and looked at a one-tenth of an acre basis. So everybody's kind of on an apples-to-apples -apples comparison is what we did here, so like everybody's a tenth of an acre, whether you did a tenth of an acre or not. Um, and it makes you look at some interesting things. When we do the apples to apples, you can get a sense about, on a tenth of an acre, who's producing the most per tenth of an acre, right? So as we think about these things, some people are better at growing than others. They're killing it, this guy's killing it, right? Right, here's our average over here. These guys are a little low. Here's our farm e guy. That might explain a lot about why they're losing four cents on every dollar, just in terms of the total of production in that same area. And these guys are, some of these here are just pretty close to the average. Not bad. Again, our one example of, hey, I'd pick that farm that has the highest gross margin. Gross margin is great. But like I said, is this, is this even possible at a tenth of an acre? You look at the total. You know, they're, 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 uh, they're, what they're raising per tenth of an acre is a little lower than the average. That's not too bad. But the big story is here. Sales per pound sold. Killing it. I, let's call this the boutique operation. Right? And me, I'm very much the boutique operation to speak from uh, experience. I'm the CSA person. Garlic is simply just a, one part of the mix about what I'm doing. Right? CSA, I can realize a fairly good margin. Right? And if I'm going to realize that margin, I'm going to have to have some garlic in there. Keep the, keep the memories happy, if you will. So is this even possible at Tenth of an Acre? And we might want to look at some of these other folks as examples of what does scaling up look like, right? Um, to get a sense of expenses, I'm going to skip that. But again, just to say 53% of all expenses for the value of the seed, that non-cash expense. That's a big part of the equation as you think about setting a garlic operation in general. 
But really, a lot of it in terms of how do we get profitable does relate to how well we do these things, right? <laughs> it's about, like any um, specialty crop operator, it's always like, I introduce myself to other farm operators as the dirt farmer. Because, you know, for the most part, you know, we can get fancy sometimes, but we're kind of, we're still kind of dirt farmers at the end of the way. And that just means we're usually doing a lot more handwork than your average farmer. And the world of garlic looks traditionally like a lot of handwork. It certainly looks like that to me. Uh, whether it's cleaning, whether it's harvesting, whether it's planting, you know. Victor's going to tell us whether he's got some secret sauce or he's just got 3,000 first cousins that are really into planting garlic with them. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so we're going to hear a little bit about that. And this is my last part as we think about um, uh, just the numbers and then one finishing slide is the spread of labor is significant, right? If we're looking at what farm are we going to pick, you know, this is after we uh, total amount of garlic marketing and production time uh, invested per sale, right? What are you doing in terms of an hourly wage on this, on this enterprise? I want to be this guy. <laughs> Right? And because there's quite a spread. Again, I keep beating up on Farm E. They just keep, you know, no matter how you look at it, it's not, not working so great. But we have some real examples of folks that are doing well. Uh, and some of these, not here, but these guys here are a great example in terms of Farm A, of one that was growing a fair amount of garlic in comparison to others, that are relatively good uh, marginal cost. And they must be doing something efficient in terms of getting this, um, this wage rate for the time that they're investing in it. So just to frame that up for Victor a little bit, like how do we scale up or how do we think about scaling up? Hey, one big story is efficiencies, right? No matter what scale you're at, uh, one of it is, one way of doing about, going about it is just getting good at it, right? Will Ryan as a CSA person that does 40 crops ever get really good at garlic? Probably not because I'm playing with 40 crops, right? Some people that really delve deeply in the garlic, just in terms of the hand labor, probably get pretty good at it, right? There's a lot to be said about us as farmers in terms of hand work getting good at things. Victor's gonna tell us how some of that looks. Some of the other efficiency can be like, I can put in so much time, and with a proper piece of equipment, we can actually get a lot more done, right? So this is a one name of the game. Um, Myself, one thing I like to talk about, and sort of goes back again to my Canadians and Bill, is um, I'm a huge proponent in terms of thinking about profitability of farms across all specialty crops with this notion of how do we sell it all, right? Because not all garlic's gonna be wonderful seed garlic that we're gonna sell for 15 bucks a pound, right? Is it? How do we sell it all? <laughs> or sell as much of a product as possible? We certainly see this with specialty crop operators, and I think garlic is, is no exception. If you're having 30, 30 to 40% of your product either left in the field or worse yet, spent time on to be harvested and not sold, you kind of got a problem in terms of profitability. I'm, big, I'm a big fan of Lean Farm, you know, that Ben Hartman dude. It's just like, just keep reading that book every year. You'll be better off. A large part of that is that supportive marketing mix. I'm done. <laughs> and how can we, um, get stuff sold both wholesale, direct market, and the like, and that mix that would allow us to sell all of that product, the seconds and the, and the seed and the stuff we're holding over to be good. And it's clearly looking at this data that good fertility management is certainly part of the story. You saw the difference in terms of how some people were producing and that distribution between low production on a tenth of an acre and very high production on a tenth of an acre. Right, so that's something we obviously need to care, care about and look at. Thank you. So I know I said, I, I kind of shortchanged Ryan there with the, the time. Uh, while I'm changing it over to uh, my slide presentation with Victor, I would, uh, who's got a burning question for Ryan? Oh, oh. Jules does. Are right. you on? Farm A, B, C, D, or A. is that uh, pressing? I I'm okay with revealing it. Do you remember which one I was? No.
Uh, <laughs> I was his favorite. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Was that just the one year, or was that a, like over time an average? Nope, that was a one year. That was 2017. 2017, yep. So that was stuff planted in 2016, harvested in 2017. Yep. So that maybe wasn't an accurate uh, reason or um, comparison that anybody just had a bad year, or? Yeah, no, that's a, it's a good point, Leroy, this question about, um, it's only for one year, and to what extent would you expect some change year after year? I've done enough of these things in cross specialty crops. Yes, weather's a factor, right? These things obviously have an impact, but I think what we're trying to do is get a screenshot in terms of uh, that mix of inputs and, and management. And I, I, I'm of the opinion that this management and your, uh, your, your production uh, system is one of the primary things. I would say it's more primary than weather, right? Because you have eight different farms that are probably growing differently, right? And this difference in kind of how they're growing, I think matters more than this issue about out over here uh, of weather, which is our external thing. It probably affects all of them to some degree in the same way. But in comparison to other enterprises that we have financial numbers for, uh, our interest was simply to say, never having collected any benchmarking data for garlic in Minnesota, period, this is better than we've ever been. So at least we've gotten over this one hump, and it will never probably ever get to the point across all specialty crops to where we are with corn, soybeans, and dairy, right? Where we can kind of better look at the impacts of some of these external factors outside of the production system. I would like to introduce to you Victor Vasilidis. Uh, you can give me a round of applause. <laughs> uh, and I mentioned before, I'm Jerry Ford. I'm saying things for the camera here. And uh, just as a point of comparison, I grow about two tenths of an acre of garlic, and that's all I am happy just to grow that much. Uh, and just again, as a point of reference, uh, that's about between six and 7,000 bulbs. And I will make, um, I'll put about 5,000 in my pocket or so, which is a nice income stream. Very nice. With the farm, mm -hmm. you know, with everything else on our farm. Um, do I want to get bigger? No, I'm going to let him do that. Uh, <laughs> so, Victor. We can go uh, together. We yeah. <laughs> we can be yeah. partners. Yeah. No. We never know. Um, <laughs> And I, it's okay if I say, um, I, we've talked about this before, uh, Victor's English is much better than my Greek. Yeah. Uh, so Just I may so I do a little bit of interpreting. Thank you. <laughs> because Thank you. we've just talked together a lot. Yeah. So, uh, all right, so uh, how long have you been growing garlic? Since 2012. And where's your farm? Uh, right now, Stillwater, Minnesota. Near Stillwater. Yep. Yeah. And I just caught that. You started in 2012. Yeah, with, uh, 10 years ago. And did you get Aster Yellows that year? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah a little bit. Some of us got it a lot that year. Yeah. Um, I, I never snapped to that. What a great year to start and then just get wiped out. Yeah. Um, and then uh, why did you decide to get into garlic? Well, uh, it's a long story. I can give some details. Somebody came and talked to me about the garlic, and I said, "Okay, let's try it." I, my background is a far I was a farmer back in Greece, and I do restaurant business here, so it was like my hobby. But if you go deeper in the garlic, you go deeper, you know, <laughs> every year. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, it's a support group. Yeah, yeah and, <laughs> and uh, you have one, one uh, clove of garlic. Next year, we, we have four, okay? Right. So the four is going to be 16. And if you don't sell it, you have to have room where you're going to replant it. <coughs> well, some of us eat So it, the first year was a little bit difficult. We, everybody said, oh, nice garlic. Well, I like garlic. You don't want to buy it? No. Nope. <laughs> I said, what I'm going to do with this garlic. So I replanted it, <laughs> replanted it, and became now I got seven acres of garlic <laughs> so far. So, and the best, uh, the best seed is from 
from Jerry, my advice, if you want to buy <coughs> a seed, you have to find the right person to buy seed because seed is the best of the beginning. All of the beginning is the, the, the seed, correct? It comes from the seed yep. stock. It all starts there. Yep. That's right. Exactly. Ed, thanks for the plug. I, I see the, the difference Slip between... Slip 20 here. Yours. <laughs> <laughs> I see the difference between uh, the seed that I use from you mm -hmm. and the seed that I used to have is a big difference. Really? Well, thank you. Yeah. And there's another factor with that. My farm is certified organic, and Victor wants to sell certified organic. Yep. He will only sell certified organic. Only, only certified yeah, organic. that limits your 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 pool there of people you can don't, buy from. Don't don't buy from grocery stores. <laughs> for for seed, okay? Unless for it's seed because we don't know. <laughs> I, I sell the grocery stores. Don't buy even mine, <laughs> because uh, we don't know what the, the quality of the seed will come from if they sprayed any treatments to mm. not sprout. So you can probably plant it and next year you don't have nothing, just field. Yeah. Right? So that happens anyway sometimes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I and okay, so you said seven acres. Seven acres, yeah. And that uh, translates if you had to guess how many bulbs that uh, is. Usually it goes twenty four thousand an acre, but now I have uh, because I do the planter. The rose is a little bit uh, wide. Uh, assuming it's going to be 15,000 times 7, 100,000 bulbs in general. 100,000. Yeah. I, I think that's the most in the state. No questions till the end. Um, I think, I think it, except for we don't know who's growing for Seneca and Green Giant. Somebody is. And I would love to find out who. Um, we can talk about that later if, if you like. Um, so, uh, so we already mentioned about seed stock and you already gave great recommendation there. Yep. And I think you'd agree with me that go see it. Go, if you're gonna buy seed stock from somebody, go see it if yep. you at yep. all can. Local? Local and people who, who are, I mean, in the business for a long time, like you, mm -hmm. Keen. Keen Garlic. Keen yeah. Garlic, they're doing very well. I mean, I buy from them. Um, yeah, these are the two people yeah. that I use. And if anyone knows somebody else that he do the same thing, yeah, it's a better thing. But still, you have to trust the people who buy it or you can see the, what you buy before you buy it. Because some people, you have some on the, the website, you know, I mean, somebody buy it and yeah, garlic and wasn't great. And yep. Yeah. So. Yeah, we've had a little bit, I hear reports of that. We have that directory that many of you are listed in. And then, of course, they, why they call me first when <laughs> they bought from somebody and it didn't quite turn out well. Um, you know, the, but, you know, we try to do quality control. And one of the things we do, segue here, is uh, if you're going to sell on our directory, you have to do what test state? Blood. Nematode the bloat nematode test, mm -hmm. uh, and so you, I you it, want that too. I, I did it too, mm -hmm. even if I don't sell uh, As seeds, uh, seeds because um, for reason that uh, for the future. I mean, I don't want to mm -hmm. have uh, blood nematode in my oh field. Gosh. Can you imagine seven acres of bloat nematode? Yeah, it's not great. Uh, yeah, it's not great. And we, if you don't know about bloat nematode, it's bad. Okay, and what kind of varieties? Uh, usually I'm, I'm using uh, porcelains because I'm uh, sell the wholesale. I'm not going to divide them. Like I got Romanian, Music, Red, uh, German Red, German Heart. No, it's German porcelain or porcelain, German Extra yeah. Hardy. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I use some uh, Rocken Balls. Rocken so Balls? Yeah, yeah. Wasn't wasn't my, my type. I mean, yeah. I, don't, I don't like it. Okay, you heard it here, folks. Doesn't like rocamboles. Not only <laughs> rocamboles. The, the, the garlic that they are, um, for my opinion, the softnecks, they are good, but they have too much waste. Yeah. In, in, in the time you're going to go for reseeded, mm -hmm. you have to use only from 12 gloves, gloves, you can use only five. Picking the biggest gloves. Yeah. yeah. So you've narrowed it down to pretty much porcelain. Porcelain, family. I think, is the yeah. best for my yeah. farm. And you're looking for a very consistent bulb. Um, you, you, some people like to have a lot of varieties. Chris has a bunch yeah. of varieties. Uh, you know, to give people a choice, mm -hmm. your customers are buying just garlic. Garlic, organic, produce 100% yeah. from Minnesota. They don't care if it's a, 
you know, a Krasnodar red or whatever. It's yeah, maybe it's some people, they, they like the rose, so those purple stripes on it. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no doubt about it, it's tasteful. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, it's too much waste for my, mm -hmm. my opinion. Mm -hmm. Without That's saying uh, better. Like production I mean. efficiency thing. Yeah, if you do it by hand, if you do it by <laughs> hand, it's, it's okay. But if you do it by blender, the things, you have mm -hmm. to change all those cups and all mm -hmm. those, uh, so it doesn't work for me. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna broach the subject of, I hope you don't mind me saying this. Uh, Victor's the only person who has ever come to me and said, how do I grow smaller garlic? <laughs> 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 and we'll get to the packaging here in a little bit. Uh, what what kind of size of a bulb are you looking for? Uh, my, for my situation, the best size is um, two inches. Yeah, that's and two ounces. I'm like, two point two. How do I answer that question? But we've been coming up with some techniques to keep the garlic from getting too big. <laughs> like no, it's more easy. Uh, like we do with the cattle. Is that what you're saying? We're yeah. um, <laughs> uh, gonna fell down. <laughs> But we could talk about that technique a little later. Uh, okay, so here's one of your fields. Yeah, this is the field that we start planting. Was it, um, what's the name of the guy came? Grant? Uh, Who take the picture? Oh, Greg, Greg. Swesser, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is about um, middle, end of October, I think. So yeah. what did you use to work up that field? Uh, used to be uh, rye. Oh, it's, it was no, a cover no, crop? Used, excuse me, yeah, it used to be rye. Mm -hmm. Before I was um, sordu, uh, sorghum sudan so, and, sorghum and sudan. Mm -hmm. buckwheat okay. for cover crop. Yeah. So, yeah, it's uh, the, the best uh, rye field, so I hope it'll be the best uh, garlic field. <laughs> yeah. I've often followed rye in my in cover <coughs> crops. And, but what tool did you use? Uh, you, we, uh, the first time when I, uh, it was uh, alfalfa, like the other ones, mm -hmm. I mean uh, hay, and I plowed it with a three-bottom plow. Three-bottom, oh, an actual yeah. mold board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, we do the uh, buckwheat um, and the sorghum. Uh, sorghum. Sorghum. Mm -hmm. And then I go replow it again and do some uh, chisel plowing. Chisel That's plow? It. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, no tiller. No tiller. No, no roto tiller. No. Okay. Um, and let's see. I have other questions. What do you use for fertilizer? Uh, this year I used the uh, Cosmo. Cosmo? Yeah. Like you all are familiar with Cosmo? It's composted poultry. Compost, yeah. yeah. Is, uh, I th we'll see the results of this year. Mm -hmm. The previous year I used the, the brothers from here, from St. Michael. Uh, Adam and Michael, uh, Highland, yeah. Highland. Uh, High Island Organics, yeah. I think they're exhibiting. I, I think it was a very good year for me. I mean, okay. with that, uh, yeah. some other, I don't say the name of it, some other fertilizing that don't work very well. They stink too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but Michael's, uh, the Highland, um, uh, comp it's a compost or pellets? I can say that. It's a pellets. It, I think it's the pellets. Yeah, yeah I think that they works do very well, and I'm, I'm assuming the <laughs> Cosmo is going to work well too. We'll see. Yep. Cosmo. Uh, and I get pellets uh, from um, Mid, Mid State Supply. Mid State Supply here in St. Joseph. Uh, and it's like, a, do you remember the numbers? Is it like a 533 three or something? I think it was 424. Uh, 424. Four. Or something like this. So y you can't I, I burn can you can't burn the crop. <laughs> you know it's it's very low nitrogen, yeah. but a lot of organic matter. Mm -hmm. um, and okay, you already told me what was growing there. Okay, so are you renting these fields? Yes, yes. So can do you mind telling it? You don't have to, but how much you pay for rent per acre? Uh, I rent about thirty acres there, right now, and the rent was like symbolic for one seventy eight. One hundred seventy-eight dollars per acre. Per acre, yeah. one hundred seventy-eight per acre. But this is going to be up now because it's a lot everybody's after, up after seven years. Yeah. Okay, so one hundred seventy-eight yeah. an acre to rent the land. Yep. Uh, but you're renting thirty acres. Not right now, thirty acres. Yeah. yeah, I got twenty acres right. So it's a way to kill the quack grass. I don't know if you guys have quack grass in your <laughs> fields. So the quack grass do a lot of things. One thing is, it's not good. Yeah. I want to see it. Yeah. So the oh, other thing goes, uh, the root goes, if it's dry, goes through the, straight to the bulb. Yeah. 
to find the water. Yep, so imagine if you that. have a uh, bulb that is ruined, you can sell it. So that's why I, uh, they told me old, I mean, uh, old farmers, they, s they know lots of uh, biological results. Mm -hmm. uh, one result is the rye. So to put rye in to yeah. help w suppress the quack grass. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, so cracking bulbs, my favorite pastime. <laughs> um, the, uh, is th this is your cracking machine, right? Yeah. Yeah. About, about how, do, this one, uh, how does it work? This, it, works, oh, it works okay. Oh. It needs a little bit of <laughs> yeah. labor after, after you, um, you broke the bulbs. And but is it actually tumbling them, or is it blowing air on them? Really? Uh, I can, I can. If you have, do you have another picture? That's the only That's one. The I only had, one. Yeah. So this thing is work from from the top. It's like a boiler. No. So Hopper. you throw the the garlic in. Hopper. Hopper. Yeah. Bravo. Thank you. Uh, you bro, do you the throw the garlic in consistently? You know. Yeah. Not Keep everything. it feeding. Yeah. yeah. And is it uh, rotary things oh, goes okay. around and split them off. So there helps the, uh, so there I can see here. So yeah. this, from down here comes the garlic, the, the gloves, and the leaves goes the other side. So I that's what the fan's for, is to yeah. blow off blow all off the, the excess. The leaves. Okay. Yeah. So it's like a washing machine. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, stop that. <laughs> Similar. <laughs> uh, so um, the, the music and the, the porcelains, they break very, very well. Hmm. They are clothes. soft necks, they are not big so well. So if you're going to scale up, Victor's saying porcelains and probably some of the purple stripes would work. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is seven, six cloves, six five cloves. Yeah, 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 yeah more just than usually a few. They are very stiff, they're very stick together. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so then we're looking at the planter. Plant, yeah. And um, I'm going to show a video of, of this too. Um, so, it's a, uh, so this blender came from from China. It used to be have uh, six rows. So after I buy the harvest machine that uh, Jerry we'll get to that. later, yeah. I, uh, they uh, it have to be four rows, 14 inch apart. So the uh, the equipment can go through and pick up the the garlic. Um, it's it's work very well. I mean, it's a nice piece of equipment. We can we can plant about four acres a day, five, if you work eight hours. <laughs> so yeah, it's the two days you're gonna done. I mean, I done two days in the hour. If I put out eight hours, sixteen hours, I done eight, eight acres, seven acres of garden. Six. So that would plant my two tents in about 10 minutes. Uh, yeah, just yeah. one time. <laughs> one one yeah. time down the road. Done. <laughs> yep. Uh, oh, why am I doing it the way I do it? Um, you, you do quality, correct? Quality, yeah. that's right. Because, next question. Um, so every one of those clothes is sitting right side up, isn't it? Uh, this <laughs> is the, the thing, like, <laughs> like the garlic, uh, if you want to, everybody, we are human, correct? But Most of us. Yeah, but there's uh, <laughs> two billion humans in this world. How many models is in this oh, world? Oh, how many, how many people are supermodels out Supermodels, yeah. All few, right, correct? All right. So I see where you're going. If you, uh, I believe this is metaphorical. If you, if you go buy garlic, you're going to see if it's straight or here or there. You're going to say, garlic. I'm going to use it for my food, okay? After five minutes, you're going to crush it. You're going to put it in the, in the food or make it butter, whatever. And you don't care I don't see any like. people, <laughs> any customers to say why this is crooked or, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, uh, and the most of the garlic correct themselves. So if the, let's say this is the bulb, right. fell like this down, comes the roots and goes up. That was quite a bit. Tractile roots, they call them. Yeah. Uh, especially with the purple stripes are supposed to be really good at that, of pulling the clove down. I used to grow some that, I mean, it'd be three inches further down. Uh, it's like... And it's I see some garlic, they grow very well in this side too. Yeah. They can. Yeah. The, yeah. the only thing, the stem goes like, I mean, like right. this, Crooks. like hook. Mm -hmm. so. um, all right, so here's putting you on the spot. How much does one of these things cost? This one <laughs> cost uh, 800 bucks. 
No, come on. No, no, no. This is the truth. The planter bucks. cost 800 bucks. 800 bucks. But the, the shipment cost a lot of money. Oh. <laughs> 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 the shipment was... 20,000. No, 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 20,000. It was, um, I think, if I'm not wrong, if I remember well, because I buy this 2016, it was uh, 2,700 for shipment. So 3,500. About 4,000. Yeah, mm -hmm. four, five, five years ago. Yeah, so it's more now if you can get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Well, that surprised me. I so you could become a distributor and get a whole bunch of these over here. No. I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, so you're filling up these hoppers, yep. and let me show the video here. And I want to say, um, if I did what Victor was is doing in this video, of like looking forward in the camera with the camera and, and then turning around and, and driving the tractor, these would not be straight rows. I don't know um, if it's straight rows. We're uh, going to see the We're going to find out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we'll see. <laughs> okay, like I said, this is the back side of the planter too. Thank you. Um, so I, I think I started somewhere in there. So you've got a little haro set up, yep. a rake in the back to smooth cover, it out. Cover the... Okay, let me see if I can get another uh, angle here. Seeing that one. And so you're helping out there, somebody's helping out. Yeah, because uh, we need someone uh, back in the machine because uh, the variety of the, I mean, the size of the gloves is not the same. Mm. So sometimes grab two, if it's right. small, the rock and balls, so the same before or the soft yeah. legs. Or sometimes doesn't grab any. And this is the one? He is by himself here. Yeah. Or when I started. Oh, sorry. So if I'd have done that little shift, tractor would have been good. And nobody's helping out on that one. So. Yeah, this is when it's full up, we don't need any help. Great. OK. Mulching. Um, so is that that's a nicely mulched field there, right? Yeah, this is by hand. This that one was by I hand. Did, oh, this okay. This is the last time I did it by hand. <laughs> Doesn't take many times, does it? About an acre, acre. If and it yeah. was if it was seven acres, I'd be doing it till no. about New Year's Day. And, uh, still, I'm going to work on it. Mm -hmm. If it was by hand this year, I'm still working on it. You're still working on it. Huh? Still working on the mulching for this year. Okay, let's see if we can do a video here. This is 12 of the, the midnight. So this is <laughs> midnight mulching here. And unfortunately, you can't really see the machine since he's in the tractor cab. Uh, that's an old John Deere yeah, uh, very old bedding system. spreader, yep. right? Yeah. Um, and then there's, it, it's similar to this one. This is off of the, uh, off of YouTube. It's similar to one of these bedding spreaders. And so what was the one thing you told me that isn't so great about one like this? This one, because uh, I see, I saw that uh, goes very, very fluffy, very slow. I don't know how the operator work on it. If it's a little bit windy, the time that mulching all this this um, hay doesn't go where it wanted, and and doesn't spread it very far away. It's about only five feet, so we need at least twenty feet. Mm -hmm. And this that John Deere one that you had. Yeah, it goes like twenty feet Great. from one side, and twenty feet from the other. All right. How much do you spend on buying the mulch material? Uh, and what is this it? year, or do you want to see like uh, how much you spend per acre? Sure, per acre. So it's a thousand dollars. A thousand an acre to mulch the garlic. Yeah. And what product are you using? Is it straw or is it? I use straw, and um, and this year I tried the uh, corn stalks too. Corn corn stover. Corn, corn yeah. stalks. Yeah. So yeah. Which is what I use. Yeah. yeah. So we'll see how they go. Good. Um, and with that spreader, was it pretty consistent? Uh, the spreader is like, uh, is very nice, uh, not consistently, mm. not so uh, evenly, but right. you can go afterwards with a 
two, three days on the seven acres and go with the pitchfork and fix them Smooth up. Smooth it out. Yeah. yeah. And does it take it? Like, I do the this one for how many? I mean, it was an acre, acre and one quarter. Mm -hmm. And I spent by myself with noise and equipment seven days. <laughs> yeah. 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 More than seven days. And My yeah, limiting factor push with that the is, yeah. Push the like mm. make muscles. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's my limiting factor, is my back. And <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm done with mulch for today. So then I get an unroller, go up with the unroller, but still oh, you have to- Oh, a bale unroller, yeah. Yeah, you have to smooth it out with a yeah. pitchfork. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, my opinion, the best thing you have uh, equipment, like uh, mulcher, is gonna be great. One of those spreaders. Yeah, like that. yeah. yeah. And nicely mow. This was back when you were planting by hand. This is, yeah, by hand. Um, not with the planter, but nicely mulch uh, beds. Yep. Uh, so what do you do about weeds? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what I do by weeds? Yeah. <laughs> uh, exercising. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Go down and pull yeah, weeds. I mean, All sometimes right. last, this year we don't have too much weed, too mm. many weeds. Because it was dry. Yeah, and they come one week before the harvesting. And then who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Um, usually you can go every morning and pull some of the weeds. And the best uh, way is like when it's going to be small before it gets bigger. Because the uh, other column, that, uh, not the pigweed, is some other one. Oh it's right. very small and goes. Oh, uh, yeah. The, uh, um, Something like this. Uh, yeah. But you get a big one. The, the Lambs, and everything. And the, and the roots <laughs> there is very big, you know, and if you take them off, yeah, comes out the garlic too, you know, so. Yeah. You don't want they're small. My main one is thistles. I, is my, my, they'll push right through the mulch. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so, uh, well, that's good to hear that you're still hand weeding. Yeah, sometimes uh, if you need it, yeah. Scapes. Uh, what do you thing? do with the scapes? Scapes, um, when you be in this, uh, even, even earlier on this uh, size, Snap them off. If you can sell it, sell it. Otherwise, throw them down. There's a lot of lot of scapes. Yeah, that's taking some organic matter off your yeah. field. But uh, how do you get seven acres of uh, how many people? Which part of? <laughs> <laughs> wait on the questions. <laughs> we'll, we'll save the question. Yeah, write it down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, uh, s do you sell the scapes? Yeah. Okay. I sell the scapes last year. Mm -hmm. And do you, what kind of whole, you're selling wholesale. Wholesale, yeah. What kind of price did you get? Um, the price was like uh, not very, very good. But if you, if you spend the money to have how many people? It was like three people. For last year, I got three and a half acres. So imagine it was 60 to 70,000 bulbs. So you need about two or three people go in the morning or not in the afternoon because it's too hot. And, and it's not easiest in the morning because the moist. Uh, yeah. And make break even. Mm -hmm. So what I sell, I pay my, my um, pay the workers. The workers. Yeah. And I don't pay myself, mm -hmm. <laughs> but the workers, yeah. Well, yeah, so you four, might consider. Yes, four dollars per pound. And four dollars a pound. Four dollars okay. a pound. That's, that's not bad. Yeah, it's, uh, it's great. I mean, if you can pay the farm, the yeah. workers. Um, but that's selling to a grocery store. That's not selling at a farmer's market where you can. No, you can, yeah. I can't do that. Thing. Yeah. It's too much, too much time. Did you, did you mention he runs a restaurant too. So. Yeah. Uh, um, okay, harvesting machine. This is a harvest machine, the Calen Zocapi. It comes from Spain. It came from Spain uh, through Canada. So it costs about $26,000, $27,000, but uh, you do harvesting very well. And um, yeah, you can, you can have three acres a day easy. Three acres a day? Yeah, very easy. Wouldn't that be nice? So because it was the first year, we have problems with, uh, with the mulching. So this equipment doesn't like the mulch. So it's spitting it out in bundles of how many yeah. plants? 
Uh, about 25 or 30, I think. 25 or 30 yeah. plants in a Depends the size. Round. Yeah. I, I don't think I have a good shot of the, the front of it. Uh, oh, maybe I do. No. I don't have a good shot of how it... Describe how yeah, it it's actually... Like a, <laughs> it's like a two, uh, one belt with the two rollers and has a plow underneath. The plow goes where's the bolt, make it loose, and they grab him with, uh, with the belt and goes up on the binder system, make the binds and throw them away. So what's the guy sitting there doing? Uh, sometimes, you know, because the, the garlic is a mulch, under mulch, comes from this side or comes from that side, um, you have to correct. Yeah, he corrects the, centered the, up. The, the fork that we call the fork goes mm -hmm. in the center, yeah. Okay. Um, so let me get back to the show here. Uh, okay. So there was a second video, but in the interest of how are we doing on time? <coughs> you know, doing great? Oh, we might go back and show that video. And you said this costs how much? 26.7. And was there shipping with that? Uh, everything, yeah. Everything That's everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The shipping okay. was there. <laughs> and came through Canada? You they couldn't came buy through, through Canada, yeah. It comes uh, from Spain, Canada, Canada, still water. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, curing and storage. Uh, is this where you're curing? Is this picture? I never ask you in advance. This one? Yeah. Yeah, this uh, is a barn, old barn. In the, far, in the farm that I rent. Mm -hmm. So I, uh, this year I store it there and it's uh, much better than, than the small, do you see my, my small casino that I have there? No? The no, I've never seen it. Anyways, a yeah. tobacco style. Oh, yeah, with, with rafter, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is better, I think better opportunity for me because uh, it's not the level. Hang them yeah. up, hang them down, and yeah. uh, in the rain, and you get plenty of airflow with the doors yeah, being open. Yeah, I have two doors yeah. open there, and it's, it's a great. I mean, good. Yeah. And I see there's some scapes on some of those, but uh, this is because we forget them. Oh, wow. Well, or uh, because I need some uh, bubble uh, bibble seeds. Bulbils. Bulbils. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a whole other conversation. Yep. About bulbils. Mm -hmm. So one of the thoughts I had about if you want smaller bulbs is leave the scapes on, especially with porcelains because you know what porcelains do when you remove scapes, they get bigger. Well, if you don't, then it puts energy up so you could... Yeah, we try a lot of things. Yeah, we'll yeah we try things. We'll or works. And planting later. Yeah, plant, or harvesting. Plant in a, uh, yeah, we'll see Chris and I have talked about harvesting early. Um, I'm a little just that they won't be mature. We'll, we'll but try this We'll year. find out. We have a thousand bulbs. To yeah, what the heck? Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, so cleaning, getting it ready to go into packages. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll skip to packaging. Uh. <laughs> cleaning is uh, so far by hands. Oh my so I have a s oh. smooth hands now. <laughs> cleaning a lot. So yeah, I have to clean them up nice and. Um, and be presentable so people can buy it. I mean, uh, it's a lot of work, lots of work. When it's about 5,000 bolts or 10,000 bolts, you can do it by yourself, but it's over 50, 60, then you need help. Because what happened last year, I sell my garlic and I said, okay, now we start, we'll see next week how much garlic those uh, stores they need. So in the three days, they call me back, so I need more garlic. <laughs> Say, just bring it. Don't bring us garlic because we sell them. So I have to hire people and do this job with me. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a labor. I mean, it's a money there. You have to spend money. Otherwise, um, pretty much you're going to be behind and, and people are going to be met with you. I mean, the, the business people. And they don't order anymore. Are you thinking of yeah, I'm getting thinking, some I'm, kind of I'm, equipment. I'm thinking to have, uh, and the other thing is with the music, they don't have too much paper on it. Mm -hmm. You don't want to take all everything, uh, all mm -hmm. the paper out, yeah. mm -hmm. because then it's another problem. Come, comes dry. So it dries you have to be out. careful yeah. with that things. Yeah. So yeah, it's like some equipment, but they're expensive. They are. There's we'll, some. We'll see. 
different people. I'll, hook, I'll connect you with um, uh, Tom Kaufman sometime, remind me. Mm -hmm. He has a compressed air method he uses. Okay. Um, oh. It's still hand work, but you just kind of, you know. Um, well, this is great. Let's yeah. see how we're going to do that. Yeah. I mean. Well, that was worth doing this right there to get that tip, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so here's packaging. Yeah, packaging and um, uh, all those things. I mean, the, the, the label, which this is not the label, how we saw them with a, with a, with a wrap, I mean, the cloth, not with the staples. That not, not seems nice, you know? So here, you see one up and one down. This one. Oh, sure. So now what I do, I saw them, with the all those things, I mean, the, the, the car and the net and the saw them cost about 55 cents. Per package? Per each one, yeah. Are you saying sewed? Yep. Yeah, so it runs a, a it sews it. Yep. Yeah. So, uh, I didn't know that. The graphics, yeah. the net, and yeah, it costs money. And so do why do you do it this way? And um, why I do it this way? Mm -hmm. It's a leading so, question. I well, mean, this is tricks for uh, my, my business career. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. this is a because, you don't have to because you're going to go in the, restaurant, in the grocery store and say, okay, here is like a bulk garlic. How much are I going to get? One, two, three? How much is? I mean, how many ounces? Three? Oh, I don't want three ounces. I want two. So do you know here is the three ounces? You grab it and go. That's the idea. And that's what the stores want. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, easy. They have the barcode. They don't have to be by by pounds. They don't have to weigh it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's why the medium-sized bulbs. Yep. Because because know, if you ha if it's different if you have uh, one bulb which will be big one, okay. It's tend to have a two or three. So you buy three bulbs, or you buy one bulb. So if you pay six bucks, <coughs> let's say number for three bulbs, it's going to be two for each one. If you pay if you pay six bucks for one bulb, it's too much money mm -hmm. for one bulb. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. I mean, yep. uh, and now I'm, this year I'm going to do something different for the big bulbs. We're going to figure out the name. We have to go go with uh, something different and make it different packaging for big big uh, bulbs. I mean, huge bulbs with uh, four ounces or three ounces, mm -hmm. do something different. Yep. And, and see how, how it works. Yeah. Um, boutique or, or something like that. Premium. Premium, premium garlic. Imagine yeah. that. The yeah. best premium uh, garlic. We have 10 minutes. <laughs> I, I copyrighted premium. OK, yeah. I'm going to buy <laughs> you it You have to do you. something else. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Licensing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Um, OK, uh, and I noticed barcodes. Yep, barcodes. The stores want that, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah you mm -hmm. have to pay once for that. And yeah. and that's unique to your product. And uh, yeah, they know they mm -hmm. get the all the systems of the grocery stores. They have right. it. And next year we don't have nothing to do. Just do do the don't same have barcode. Don't put prices on it or anything. Yeah. So yeah. Um, but if you make another product, and then you have to have, another, have, have another barcode. barcode. Or you can be sneaky, but it's similar. Yeah, same thing. <laughs> same thing, just bigger bulk. Yeah. Uh, okay, and then there's a bunch of them in there. Yeah. So without revealing names, um, what kind of customers are you dealing with? Whole, um, grocery store. Grocery stores. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and c if you want to tell us, and you don't have to, uh, what do they pay you? Uh, dollars. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even rehearse that. <laughs> so yeah, I, I can't say that things because you know, I mean, I can, I can tell you how much money you can make from maker. Uh, I can tell the things because you know we have potential uh, um, competition here. So a lot of people, maybe someone mm -hmm. comes out and say, okay, Jerry, Victor, sell to you five bucks. I'm gonna sell it for you four. <laughs> so then what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. That's so right. anyways, it's like, I mean, it's 24,000 per acre, as the book says. But the book doesn't say about the expenses. Right. So the problem here is like, if we, I mean, the problem, another problem, the, the, th the point is, if we um, 
compact the uh, the labor and the expenses, then you make we make money. Otherwise, just uh, just make some money, but not mm -hmm. a lot of money. This is the, pr the problem. The biggest problem is the expenses, because everyone can produce garlic. You can do it. You can do everyone. It's nothing nothing special, correct? Well, you have to be yeah. Kind you have kind to of spend crazy. You, you yeah, have to yeah. spend a little bit time, yeah. but you can yeah. figure out. So everybody can produce garlic. The thing is, how we're going to produce less cost. That's my, my opinion. Of course. Now you do, you have in the past bought from other growers. Mm -hmm. They have to be certified organic. Yep. Um, and uh, what's your, what are you looking for when you buy from another grower? See, the problem with other growers, I can start with the problems. The okay. other growers, they want 10 bucks a pound. Of course. Okay. 15? 15, 20. Mm -hmm. Very good. So if I buy 10 for you, from you, so I have to make some money. Mm -hmm. well, I don't want to buy ten dollars and sell at nine, like uh, what is the gentleman here? So, <laughs> so the percentage and here and there, we have to make some money. Everybody, you mm -hmm. have to make money. I have to make money, and the seller, he has to make money. Mm -hmm. So if I buy ten, I sell at twelve. They're gonna sell at twenty. Who's gonna buy it? Right. Correct. I I agree. So I couldn't agree with you more. Is the the best the best thing we can do is like we, we have to think about it. We want to get big. It's like the gold, okay? We have a gold. The garlic is gold, and it's a white gold. If it's too much in the market, the price drops. It drops. Mm -hmm. If it's rare, the price is high. Mm -hmm. So now is how many people here? Forty people. If everybody has one acre, we're talking about a lot of garlic. <laughs> yes. Next year, the price is going to be down probably. Mm -hmm. So I think one good price for somebody who produce uh, 1,000 pounds or 500, 500 pounds is going to be between five dollars and seven. That's what you would pay them. Yeah, if it's good stuff. But what well, I mean, they don't have to do all those things. I mean, right. not the label, not the net, just not give you here, a big just box of garlic. Like I come, I came yeah. to you, buy the garlic. And leave, correct? But your seed. That was for seed. Different, yes. different story. So this is the thing. Like if you, if we can, if I can sell my garlic, the like two thousand pounds garlic, I harvest it today, sell it tomorrow, I can sell it five, mm. five dollars, mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. But I uh, mean, uh, yeah, I understand ten dollars is, is not too too much money. Mm -hmm. But if you go for processing, right, then it gets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the whole processing is too much money. I mean, you can, you can, I'm not set to tell the stories by my, my hand. It's like experience. You can find out how much you're going to print uh, that print, uh, cards, how much is the net, how much is the, the sodding. They're asking 25 cents for just sodding. Sewing. For each one. So I tried to buy uh, equipment to do it by himself. I said, okay, if I sodding. If I do the, the thing, what I want to do? I mean, how much how much hours I need? Uh, five. Well, you could give up the restaurant. We have five. Oh, thank you, yeah. Ivan. <laughs> we have to. I'm glad you saw. I that. have to <laughs> sleep on <around> the restaurant and <laughs> <laughs> the farm too. You know. Anyways, yeah. 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 Um, all right. So we do have five minutes, uh, and so let's open it up for some questions. Yes. I have two questions. Uh, one about the scapes. Do, you said that you snap them. Do you ever pull them? You can do that too. The question pull is about pulling or snapping sure, scapes. Like if you have a preference or if you, know, you really notice a difference between the two. We're doing field trials on that right now. Really? Okay. Uh, Phil is participating in that. I don't see any of the other growers. Um, we're trying it. Um, it's really hard to pull porcelain scapes. Okay. They're so thick and solid that we're just like, well, it just snapped anyway. Um, okay. But with something you, like... If you have lighter soils, you'll pull your garlic out. You'll pull, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's a good idea. But if it's, uh, what I'm thinking is if it's as soon as possible you see it, try to pull it, maybe it comes out because it's very... Because it's still thin. Yeah, yeah. thin. But if it gets bigger... And your second question? Uh, gosh, I'll come back to it. Okay, who's got a question? Any, yes, What Jules. percentage of garlic do you keep for seed the next year? Because I'm expanding, like from three acres, get to um, seven, almost eight. I, uh, if I'm not wrong, I keep I sell <coughs> two thousand pounds 
and I keep about 5,500 pounds okay. for seed. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Plus yours. Plus mine. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> yeah. At a premium. Yeah. Uh, again. Um, yeah. are, have you noticed any issues with white rot? I can answer that. White rot? It's, oh. it's a disease. Uh, to my knowledge, we haven't seen white rot in Minnesota yet. Yet. No, not yet. Yeah. And it's the same, it's Paul. Like a mold? How much for the cracker and uh, Oh, wait a minute. We're still talking about white rot. No, we're done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I we just know it's a serious issue. Out east. In the, in out east and, and out in California. West. So it, I just, we I haven't seen it yet. In the soil for like 25 years. So. Just like bloat nematode. Right, yeah. We have seen bloat nematode. Uh, and we're working really hard, and it may be that our next campaign, and they're not dissimilar. The effects of white rot and, and bloat nematode are very similar. Okay. We may, our next campaign may be no white rot. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah. Like, like, for me, I learned that white rot was a serious thing, so like we would have to sanitize our shoes before going into the sure. garlic field and um, any composting, we didn't compost anything garlic or onion right. or alien. Or yeah, those are biohazard type, or not bio, what is the bio something. It's like a mold. Uh, yeah. And it can live in soil for so long. Yeah, it's, it's, hopefully it will never come here. And the best way to avoid it is to buy from somebody nearby. Mm -hmm. Don't buy it from California or the right. East Coast. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and get it from me, oh, for, or from <laughs> Phil or Chris or yeah, yeah, any number of folks here. Uh, and that's the best. It's, it's like quarantining. Mm. And then once you're growing from your own seed stock, that's the best you'll ever have. It's it, once you find your stuff. Okay, uh, how are we doing? Uh, you got two minutes. Another question? Uh, Four thousand five hundred. Oh, Paul, your question, yes. Four thousand five hundred. Yeah. You from Canada. <laughs> what the, was the that? Only, what? The, only, the cracker. The oh, fan, the fan was on it. The fan was on it. Everything was on it. Um, we have some problems with uh, distribution, I mean the shipping, yeah. because it comes with other uh, equipment too, and have to stop in Wisconsin. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a costly because we don't know what's the real price. We don't know mm -hmm. what they do over in Canada. Okay, so. we have one minute, one more question, and then you can corner Victor in the hallway. The uh, everybody else who's a garlic grower now, raise your hand. Growing. So those of you who are not, what are you thinking? Um, <laughs> ask these people. They're all, uh, there's a lot of very experienced growers in the room here. Um, okay, and um, any other questions before we close it out? What's your restaurant or what's that? Oh, <laughs> plug restaurant your restaurant. Is, um, it's a small restaurant, uh, kind of best steakhouse. I use the, the name for the garlic too. And the best steakhouse, yeah, it's and a, it's what neighborhood in Minneapolis? Uh, White Bear Avenue. Yeah. In uh, St. Paul, yeah. Is it Greek so or, or just steaks? Ah, yeah. uh, steaks. And we have gyro and baklava. It's like mm -hmm. Greek thing. Yeah. yeah. And they they. It's uh, 48 years there. So <laughs> when it's working, don't change it. Correct? Yep. Work. <laughs> yeah. Work, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's Jason Walker who works out at registration here for us, as it's his kids' favorite restaurant. Really? They live around the corner. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. All right. So hand for Victor. Well, for you. Sorry if the people don't understand my accent. I'm so sorry. I'm trying <laughs> to learn more. more I'm more. trying to learn Greek, so yeah. no. <laughs> we, we are, How many years are you with you? 16. 16. When I came yeah. here, I don't speak any English. So that's yeah. pretty darn good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. I have some help from people. Yeah. Thank you. All right.